Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen, Carlos Balasquita, and Alex King here on Tuesday, December the 18th, 2018, 4 p.m. New York time. What, uh, let's see, it's uh, 1 p.m. Los Angeles time. I'm trying to get my times figured out. 9 p.m. Los Angeles time, and in Sydney, Australia, let's see, do, do, do the math, but that would make it, uh, well, let's see, I think I got the times wrong. Well, really? no, it's... Yeah, no, I did get it wrong. Yes. Well, whatever the time is. Wherever it is in Australia, hello, Australia. I can't remember what time it is in Australia. <laughs> I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's morning over it's there. It's morning. I think it's yeah. around 8 o'clock. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> whatever it is. See, what threw me off is that Carlos has a new microphone. I'm not used to seeing a new microphone in front of his face, and it, it just totally yeah. threw me off my game. But, but it looks I look good. like I know what I'm doing. You, you, you do. You look like a professional. I, mean, I feel like I'm kind of soppy here with my old mic with my hand-wrapped um, wind mask on the front of it, you know, my windscreen. So, you know, you're, you're making me look bad. But, no, you look good. You're, you're look, I, I love the blue light, yeah. too. The blue light, it just gives it that nice touch. Really good. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, I want to, yeah, quick, quick shout-out to my, you know, some of my best friends, Shalom, Brad, and Kirsten, for the, for the gift. Uh, they watch the podcast, and... And thought, hey, we, you should sound better. <laughs> Good <laughs> friends, boy. Uh, so great yeah. feedback. You know, uh, we we enjoy all all feedback from all listeners. So, uh, <laughs> yep, that's guess, true. So. <laughs> that, that, now that's true, friends. When friends buy you a microphone so you can sound better on your podcast, that's the sign of a real friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was actually yeah. I, I told him, I said, you know, some of the nicest things any anybody's ever done for me. So yeah. I'm very appreciative. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Well, plus it's also your opportunity to practice for whatever you know upcoming gigs you're going to get when you become a famous Hollywood star. So you know you have to oh, start right. with, with the good equipment, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, I got it. So, so I can do my voiceover work with it. So, yeah, Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, yeah. It'll be handy, definitely. So this is another Q and A. So this is an opportunity for people who are living listening to the live stream um, as we record this podcast on Facebook's Law of Attraction Changed My Life group. Um, feel free to type any questions that you might have that you want us to address into the comments section. Maybe there's something you're working on, something you're trying to attract, something that uh, isn't quite working out the way you'd hoped it would. And our team of experts will give you our best in-depth opinion about what it is you can do to make your, your manifesting more successful. And in the meantime, while we're waiting for the questions to come rolling in, we're going to be talking about what's going on in our lives because that's what we do. Um, oh, actually, well, Shelly wanted to let us know. She thinks Santa is bringing her a new cam for her computer. Oh, very nice. Hey. Nice. All right. Way yeah. to go, the Shelly. The, the tools of the trade. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Santa. See, it didn't yeah. take her very long. She's done one podcast with me so far, and already she's upgrading her equipment. That That's pretty darn cool, i got to tell you. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I went out and got new lighting, so... I jazz my yeah. A well, bit. it does look better. Yeah, it looks better because I, I I noticed that before because of the purples. Maybe it was just a yeah. look a little dark, but now yeah, now you can. Yeah. The lighting is definitely. Right you've got some nice contrast on your face, and it looks good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, all, we're all out here living our best life. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. I'm, I'm I'm definitely feeling frumpy today, but that's all right. By comparison, I can live with that. No, no big deal. Well, if you saw me from the neck down, you'd, I'd be frumpy, too. So it's oh, okay. <laughs> we only need to be classy from the neck up. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, but, well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So we like need the poo over here. You know, just... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, like we need the poo? <laughs> no, that, that was just... Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have... Do you have Tigger there with you? Just I'm just curious. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, tomorrow well, is Wednesday, you know, so... <laughs> how, how, how have you been, Walt? It's Tuesday. I think you're, you're it's Tuesday, Walt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like tomorrow is Wednesday. Tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, totally. yeah, tomorrow is Wednesday. Yeah, tomorrow is Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the classic Wednesday after the Tuesday thing. There it yeah. is. Yes. <laughs> can't get past you on anything. I can tell you that. I can't get past you on anything. <laughs> <laughs> how's uh, How's life? Life is definitely improving. Um, because my wife is better. The, the old cliche truly is accurate. Happy wife, happy life. And when your wife has right. been, at my, as many of our listeners know, she's been under uh, some pretty difficult medical situation that I haven't really gone into detail about. But suffice to say, it's been bad. I mean, it's been going on a little over two months now. And uh, with medical help, medication help, she is finally on the mend. She actually has a, a friend visiting her today. She's chipper. She's up doing things and so forth. It's 
it's been a really good recovery. She's still got a ways to go, but yeah. I am I am very relieved. We're both very relieved that she's doing so much better. So thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, good, good. good. Yeah. yeah, how about you guys? Anything going on over the weekend? Did you have a good week or Actually, it's been a week since I talked to you, Carlos, because you kind of missed Friday a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> what had happened was for my, you know, very keen insight. But uh, <laughs> no, I. Uh, th- this has only happened to me one other time. Um, so part of my, you know, ADD is sometimes I get a, it's called hyper focus, and so like yeah. I will just not like nothing else in the world exists except for what I'm doing. And uh, that day that, that happened, and I get a text from Wallace like three o'clock, and I don't know where the, I was working the whole time. And usually, but the thing is, I because I know this about myself, I have an alarm on my phone for Tuesdays and Fridays at, at eleven. So it's like, it gives me two hours if I'm wherever I can figure out. Okay, now I got to get back home or whatever. But yeah, I don't know. It didn't go off, or I, I missed it. It wasn't. It wasn't in the cards for me. <laughs> I was like all the way to Santa Monica too. I was like, oh man, I felt so bad. But um, yeah. Well, we missed you though. We definitely missed you. I mean, your your oh, insightful you. wit and and the fun that you bring in. So yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll try to give you a little text head up, a heads up next time. Hey, you know, we're we're coming in on the hour. You know. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I should be. I should be good for the next. Time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Only funny. happens once a month, so you're good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Alex, uh, Shelley said that she loves your blue hair. She absolutely loves your blue hair. Oh, so. thank you. Yeah. I, I'm just getting used to it. I, you know, I've been purple for a year. It's growing on me, so I might keep it for a while. We'll see. Hair does have a tendency to do that, but yeah, I mean, it works beautifully with the lighting <laughs> and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Thank like you, Shelly. <laughs> that shade of teal. That's like uh It's cerulean. Ceru- oh, cerulean, wow. Yes, if you want to get technical. <laughs> now, now I know. Now you know. The I've been put in my place. There we are. <laughs> the more you know. And Deidre actually said something really nice, too. She said, that's awesome that your wife is doing better, Walt. We need to see her in our imagination as being completely healthy and happy, as Neville says, imagine lovingly on behalf of another. That is so nice of you. Thank you very much. And I will Aww, pass it along. That was sweet. Weeks. Yeah. That's I And actually that. an update on what you had said, Walt. It's no longer happy wife, happy life. It's happy spouse, happy house. Oh, well, yeah, maybe that's what it is in your house. In my house it's happy wife, happy life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what's happened. I mean, it's been that way for 20 years, so, so you know, I mean, I haven't seen a change in the signs, so. <laughs> right, and in your defense, it is your wife, yeah. It's quite well, yeah, that's true. That's Last true. I checked, anyway, you know, I, I, I hope it's still true. I mean, I'm counting on it. <laughs> happy spouse, happy house. I hadn't heard that one. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, the politically correct version. What about happy kids? Oh, no, nobody cares if kids are happy, really. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) Give them candy. They'll be fine. (laughs) Yeah. I I have to admit, Alex, I'm shocked to hear you say that. (laughs) There's a Father's Day, but they don't ever appreciate the kids' day. And my mom was like, "Uh, we feed you and and give you uh, (laughs) Right, every every day is appreciate the kids' day. (laughs) Oh, there you go. You want to see a gift? Turn the lights on, because I'm paying the electricity. (laughs) My mom used to say the same thing. <laughs> I don't know. I think we got to do something with your parents there because, I mean, one of the things that we've been learning in our law of attraction studies is just how well connected little kids are to source energy because they were there most recently and they still have a recollection of it. So I don't know. I think we right. should be giving kids more credit. I mean, that, you know, put them in the front of the classroom and have them teach us something. We could probably learn something from you them. Know- you know, it's funny. I was talking to my sister uh, the other day, and we were kind of just reminiscing on our elementary school days. And I went to a uh, private school, and they, the, the teachers didn't necessarily have to be credentialed or anything. And, and somehow, one year, I think it was like sixth grade, my Spanish teacher just was happened to be, uh, it was a Catholic school, happened to be one of the nuns. She was a counselor or something, and we didn't have a Spanish teacher. So, like, she was trying to teach us as best she could from the book, but it wasn't working until finally... I was like, hey, you know, I, I know Spanish. I, it, it was kind of a thing where it was like, I can't watch this anymore. <laughs> right. And, no, I, but I taught the class. Yeah, I taught my, my sixth grade class Spanish. 
Wow. Uh, so I'll go, I'll nice. go up. She would kind of sit in her desk like a sub almost. And I would just go and, and I, I, I and it's really weird because I didn't remember that until we had started kind of going back. Cause my sister had a similar experience. Uh, yeah. she didn't teach the whole class, but she helped a lot. Like she was like Santa's helper, you know, for, for the, <laughs> for the Spanish teachers. So that's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> So are you going to be teaching us Spanish here on LOA today? Uh, that's actually a course that I'm selling separately, twenty nine. dollars <laughs> um, only, only five payments. If it's in full, then we take one of the payments away. I love it. Yeah, Espanol for the law of attraction. So we look out for that soon. All right, well... <laughs> You know, when you if you're going to sell a course, you actually have to give like a little teaser showing what you're going to get out of the course. So, how do we say law of attraction in Spanish? Um, el ley de atracción. Okay, now everybody together. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's in it's in Puerto Rican dialect, so you might have to just adjust your knob back right. a few, <laughs> so that it'll slow down, so you'll be able to understand. Uh, if you don't have that feature, you know, I apologize, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, it's, so for an extra five ninety five, you can get the Mexican dialect. Is that the idea? Right. I just slow it, slow, slow it down. down. Yes. Yeah. Slow it way down. Yes. <laughs> That's an East Coast versus West Coast thing. It's true in English too. I mean, everybody yeah, knows right, everybody so. on the East Coast talks too fast, and everybody on the West Coast talks too slow. It's just that's the way it is. Right. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we, we got uh, Deidre saying, oh, wow, Carlos, did they cut you a check? Should have. <laughs> oh, right. No. It, I, I, and it was great actually going back and remembering a lot of this stuff because this is not stuff that I can put into my you know, stand-up because it's, it's hilarious just thinking about all the things that, like, one, uh, our, my sixth grade teacher, uh, you know, bless her heart, she, she had kind of a nervous breakdown during our sixth grade class and left. And I'm like, curse everybody out on the left. And then they just had <laughs> the PE teacher who was like my friend's mom. <laughs> uh, for the rest of the year. And I was fine with it. My parents were like, yo, we we're paying like $10,000 a kid or some whatever ridiculous amount of money for private school. And, you know, this lady that is somebody's mom, <laughs> you know, like, but, that doesn't make sense. Public school, you get actual teachers, and it's free, you know? So Yeah, private school's a whole nother level, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, but it, yeah, it was just funny going back and, and kind of reminiscing on, on a lot of that stuff. We have actually our first question, and it's from Shelly, who's now co-hosting the Monday Evening Podcast with me. She asks, what is your most recent manifestation, and what did you do to allow it? Do you think of anything mm, that uh, comes to mind, something that's a recent manifestation, and once you identify what it is, what did it take for you to allow it in? Well, Another I'll say, <laughs> I'll say I manifested, I thought I talked about this last week, I manifested the um, matching PJs that I got for you know, my dogs. Oh, right. That's and, right. And, yeah. <laughs> and to allow it, I it was nothing. I, I didn't even, I just said one day, man, I wish they had these in my size. And then I went to the store, and there they were. They were there. And and I bought them. So that's what happened to me. <laughs> that's an easy one. I like that. Yeah, it was yeah. real easy. I'm trying to think um, of my best. Oh, I, well, I can think of one. Go ahead, Alex. Or uh, Carlos, rather. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, for me, it's just been, like, everything, really. It was like uh, I was in a, it was a state of disallowing or, or just kind of blocking a lot of stuff. Um. And it was a lot to do with, you know, my recent career change and, you know, all the emotions and stuff that go, you know, along with that and the uncertainty and all that. But then once I kind of, kind of you know, was able to get out of that, you know, mentally in that space, um, yeah, I just, I've got a couple jobs. I, I manifested a new place to live that's cheaper, that is closer to all the comedy clubs, that has, you know, a lot of resources for, um, you know, me as a comedian, as an actor, and like just everything is it, where it seemed like it was dim and I couldn't see past, you know, a few days. Now I, you know, I got that clarity and, you know, was able to allow, and it, and it was a process, you know, it was like, I, you know, uh, we did this on Friday. Linda kind of did like a group healing and, and a, a 
you know, a few weeks in a row or like an energy clearing, right. one for money specifically. Yeah. I've meditated on my own. So it was a lot of like, it's, it's tough, especially when you're in that, you know, place that you've got to really work, you know, hard to, to get out. But, you know, when you do, you're able to, you know, manifest a lot of stuff. Actually, I have um, one of the people who are listening in giving her answer on that. Deidre says that uh, she needed a new computer. And last Friday morning, her sister offered to buy her one. She didn't do anything but say she needed one. So yep. it was pretty easy to, to allow that one. That was pretty good. Yeah. Well, sometimes that's all it takes. Or this mic. Yeah, I mean, I know I needed one. And I have probably in the back of my mind or I thought about it a few times. And, you know, it showed up in the mail. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, you know, without any warning. I was like, oh, okay, okay. Well, Deidre just uh, uh, confided that also she she said, she, I must say that I, I knew I'd get one. I just thought I'd be the one to buy it. So the surprise was her sister getting it for her, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. I'm trying to think what I, I actually, um, I, I was trying to figure out a way to create a video vignette for myself because my big goal for the podcast is to really expand the listenership so that we're getting like 10,000 people listening to every single episode. And so I was mm -hmm. thinking, okay, well, how do I turn that into a vignette? Because, uh, like, Neville Goddard um, specifically says, come up with what's going to happen immediately after you reach your goal and just create a little scene and then keep replaying that scene. He, he recommends replaying it each night before you go to bed. Um, but because I've all my life had trouble actually creating images in my head, I figured, well, wouldn't it be great if I could create a video or, or maybe just a still image, something for me that you know, just is my, my result scene, so to speak. And I kept thinking about it, thinking about it. And I said, wouldn't it be great if I could somehow get a video of someone, of an audience applauding, right? And turn that mm. into like, oh, okay, this is, this is my 10,000 people listening in. And you know what? I did a search on YouTube and within minutes found this very obscure video that somebody had taken of a live audience in a fairly large auditorium. I'm just, you know, quick guess, you know, quick counting, so forth. I'm going to guess maybe 2,500, 3,000 people in the audience. And they did this whole standing ovation thing with the camera on the audience for about 30, 35 seconds. And so I said, well, there it is. There's my manifestation right there. So, you know, what did I have to do to yeah. allow it in? I had to do a search on Google. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was my Good entire... Google. Yeah. <laughs> it was just... It was, I mean, the, the strange things that people put up on Wait, YouTube, really wild. I, I actually, I actually, that reminded me of something I was thinking about that I wanted to bring up the next time we talked. And it was that I kind of made this connection with manifesting and taking action. Uh, and I think that's a distinction that, like, you know, a lot of times you don't, like, I didn't when, you know, I just received this microphone. But a lot of times, like, you don't get what you don't ask for, you know? And so when Deidre says, you know, she kind of put it out there that, you know, even that decision to, to kind of share that with her sister or, um, you know, like just little steps that we take to, to make opportunities, you know, possible. And so like, just kind of, uh, yeah, like, like, you know, thinking about it, manifesting, but also, taking steps in that direction, I feel like they, you, you, you get more of a meeting in the middle uh, okay. kind of thing, or it makes it easier to, to manifest those things. So are you saying that, um, are, are you asking uh, what you need to do in order to do that better? I, I'm not quite sure what you're, what you're saying here. No, I was just kind of pointing out the fact that um, a lot of times when we manifest, like all it takes is for, or we're trying to manifest, all it takes is for us to take a direct action. Oh, okay. Or, or maybe even an indirect action. And then that's, that would be a catalyst for opportunity. Got it. So like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Without, yeah, without having mentioned that or, um, you know, without me, um, you know, reach Googling, you know, you see, you Google. That was a direct action, right? So, right. You know, you're, you're trying to, and it, it doesn't take a lot. This takes like a little bit. And you, see, you those kind of, the things that were supposed to sh be shown to you kind of come to you. Does that make sense? Yeah. It, it's an interesting thing because I think it's because when people first hear about the law of attraction and how it works, mm -hmm. it's almost like in the human mind, we turn it into like it's a magic act. You know, somebody yeah. waved their magic wand and this amazing thing happened. And we forget right. that 
actions are part of life and law of attraction affects everything that goes on in our lives. So even if we go out and just buy a dinner at a restaurant, we did manifest that dinner. It may not be as dramatic as if somebody had, you know, out of the blue sent us a, a text message saying, hey, I'm going to buy you dinner. Go out to your favorite restaurant. I'm going to buy you dinner. That's much more spectacular. Right. But they're both manifesting. It's just one is more mundane. Right. It's more common. And we easily forget that part. Well, then my, my point, too, is that through manifesting that dinner, um, there might be somebody at that dinner that you needed yeah. for a bigger manifestation. So that's, my, so that's kind of what I'm getting at is like, yeah, everything's a step to manifestation. Those, those things start to unravel for you because you're putting yourself in those positions to where mm -hmm. those opportunities can, can kind of hit you. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, it's just something that I kind of was thinking about the other day because it's kind of something similar that's happened, happening to me. It's like, oh, through this person, I met this, and then you know this other thing, and and, and so it's, they, they've all been kind of connected, but it, it all started with like a very small catalyst. Oh, let me Google this, and you know see what options are about this or like just, um, yeah, it's kind of making a thought and kind of just putting one little action and, and that's the catalyst for, you know, that's rest. true. No, it's true. And in fact, um, manifestations actually lead to other manifestations. That's the way mm -hmm. yes. they, they normally yes. work because one thing leads to another, that, that, that cliche has been around forever and it starts with right. a thought process. So I think that's why Abraham, makes it a point to identify the, the, the time frame. And apparently the time frame has shrunk over the last 35 years. So they used to say that if you focused on a thought for 17 seconds minimum, then that would at some point manifest another thought along the same lines. And then if you did that like three or four times, so a total of like 68 seconds, that would actually start to create a physical manifestation. And apparently that time frame is now reduced. 17 seconds is now 14 seconds and 68 seconds is down to 56 seconds. So it's moving right along. <laughs> and apparently that's because the planet as a whole and the population as a whole are becoming more spiritually connected. They're paying more attention to what's going on inside. And so we're, as a population, we're getting better at this stuff. So we're, we're, we're yeah. cutting down on the resistances. Nice. I see that, bro. Yeah, I, I kind of see that. I don't know if you guys see that, like, in your daily life. I say it more in, in terms of just being blown away how many people are not just aware of law of attraction, but receptive and open to it. I mean, I'm, I'm having mm -hmm. more and more conversations with people who I'm just bringing it up for the first time. Sometimes people I'm, I've just met and mm -hmm. God, nine times out of 10, they already know what the law of attraction is. They're already into it in some way. And I'm thinking, wow. I mean, th this wasn't the case even 10 years ago, let alone 20 years ago. I mean, right. it's just. Right. It's new that to have so many people yeah. paying attention to this kind of thing. I'm I'm mm -hmm. I'm really impressed actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, I've seen uh, uh I've seen or what I've noticed too is that when you say you know people are now open to it, what I've noticed for a long time though is and it's I I've heard it when like secretly in um uh, music and like artists that I like and I'm hearing songs of theirs and they might they might say they have a like a lyric that talks about Really? Um, so yeah, the mind's, you know, how powerful the mind is and like mm -hmm. this, I was just only thinking about this and then it became that that's, there's a, there's a, you know, and a lot of, uh, popular hip hop, uh, artists that I listen to and, and very, and even, you know, actors and people you, you, I watch a lot of interviews. Um, they, people talk about this all the time, but it's, it's like, they don't, they don't spend a lot of time on it, but they do like, they'll mention it. And if you, you, you know, it's, I've been kind of aware and just, you know, seeing all the successful people that have used it to their benefit. Um, and yeah, if you talk to a lot of successful people, they'll, they'll, they'll talk about that same thing, just imagining and, and, and it'll become, you know. We, we don't have uh, questions yet, but we got some great uh, commentary from people listening in and I wanted to share some of it. Shelly said that uh, regarding the idea of one manifestation following another, she says, I think that it snowballs because, what, because once you manifest something, it's so much easier to believe that the next thing will happen and so on and so on. And that's really true. That's a good true. point, Shelly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Deidre says, it feels like magic sometimes. I was laughing as I pictured myself in a Merlin the Magician blue robe with gold stars. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Very good. I love that. And then Sarah says, more and more people are aware and starting their journey. I think it's awesome. And they're the type of people I want to be around. Yes, yeah, Sarah, me too. I agree with you. 
One hundred percent. That's one of the reasons we mm-hmm. do this podcast. So we have more and more people around who are, you know, into this kind of thing and, and talking about it. Yeah. Because I keep thinking, yeah. what happens? That, that's one of the reasons I like the idea of you know such a big audience. That's why I'm visualizing this big audience on a daily basis. Because how mm-hmm. cool is it when you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people, all basically following this new idea, new for most of us anyway, of attracting things into our lives rather than being doers trying to do everything into our lives and getting frustrated in the mm-hmm. process. When, when you get a whole bunch yeah. of people who are just you know successfully doing what they're wanting to do because they attracted it, it's got to make a better world. It's got to make a, make a better life for everybody. Yeah. True. Yeah. So let's see. Still no questions. I, you know, I, I think we have, we, we probably have to call this the advanced class. We have all the advanced <laughs> listeners. With, yeah, that, that's why there are no questions. Yeah, right? It's, yeah. <laughs> or maybe not even questions. It's just topics that you guys want to discuss. You yeah. Know, so that they don't necessarily have to be well, a question. You know, we have to yeah. talk about work. If you want to talk about, you know, throwing a situation, you know, whatever you guys want to talk about, we're, we're here to, to chat. <laughs> <laughs> that's good i like that i'm trying to think what's what's a good topic to uh to bring into it since we're not really we're, we're kind of like a little bit of a drift right now so um let's see what's a good topic to to bring we're in we're on tuesday um tuesday's in the early part of the work week for people um the day before the Wednesday. Year. We're, we're, we're approaching yeah we're approaching we're close enough to the end of the year to talk about um, you know, reflecting on, you know, 2018. And well, also, it's, it's important, Christmas. Actually. Christmas is coming up. I mean, we, that's a pretty big holiday yeah. in the West, right? And Christmas is, yeah. Christmas has a lot of things associated with it. some good, some not so good. Christmas is actually one of the more depressing times of the year for many people for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is uh, people who are alone or people who don't have good family relationships. And so for them, mm-hmm. Christmas is a trying time. Um, it's also, uh, it, it, it's especially, an, uh, I don't know how to describe it. I'm not sure what adjective I want to apply to it, but it's kind of a different time for somebody who either does not follow cr- Christmas or is not Christian. Um, right. for instance, here in the U S right. um, Jews, that's an obvious population, the Jewish population, you know, what, they, they, they have their things to do on Christmas day, but I mean, the options are limited because everything's closed down. <laughs> You know, there's not a lot of Chinese food restaurants. It's our Chinese restaurants. I had a friend who grew up uh, Seventh Day Adventist, I think, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they don't believe in presents. So, like on their, oh, on their right, birthday, right. they no presents. <gasps> uh, Christmas, like not, there's no gifts. So, like you know, imagine going to school and everybody's believing in Santa Claus and everybody has things to play yeah. with that are new and, and you don't. And so, mm. and oh that, no. You know, like, I I do I am sensitive to the fact that yeah there's there's a lot of different things going on you know especially around this time a uh, year so that's that sounds right to me that. wow that's <laughs> Alex it sounds like you're you're saying that's anathema right? like you can't do that right well I'm blown away because my cousin just converted to Seventh Day Adventist when he got married so oh. I'm like okay well if they have kids I don't have to buy gifts for my nieces and nephews. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> the shopping list just shrunk. <laughs> just shrunk, or just stays where it is. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But I was just—I didn't know that. Like, mm. wow. The the and I, I I'm not fact checked, so I I want to say like maybe I'm not a hundred percent that it was that religion, but I'm pretty sure I'm I'm yeah I don't, I'm pretty sure that it was. But uh, are you sure I don't it's really not know. Jehovah's Witnesses? I could no, actually, it could be Jehovah's. Could be, okay, because I'm Jehovah's pretty sure Witness? Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, they they don't. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. I, I I messed up, so I want to apologize. <laughs> you are so, not Google. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Google, and I didn't want to represent misleading facts. So, well, well right, now yeah, I gotta ask: Are you are you sure it's the nephew's back on the? <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta ask: Are you sure it's Jehovah's Witnesses? <laughs> I'm pretty now, sure. Pre- I know they don't yeah. celebrate Halloween. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, that's true. Actually, we have uh, somebody who's a Jehovah's Witness who's one of the maintenance guys here in the complex. And yeah. I know I know that they uh, they don't do anything with Halloween, but I didn't yeah, know that I'm about really Christmas. Totally against it. Yeah. I mean, I was well, I was Google I was pretty young, so I, I, I don't week. know exactly which religion it was, but I know that it was kind of sad because I was like, man. So I'd invite him over to play with my toys, but yeah, that well, is sad though. It is. Yeah. Yeah. 
What can you do? When you're a kid <laughs> anyway and you don't get it, you're like, what are all my friends right. having right. Nintendo and, and I don't? Well, well, plus there's also the question in my mind, what's wrong with giving a gift? I mean, especially, I, I mean, I'm not going to try to get into the thing about what the Christian side of it is because I figure that's their business. Yeah. But, but just just the basics about, you know, we we give gifts to each other out of love. We give them in mm-hmm. order to express how we feel about each other. We're not allowed to do that anymore. If, if we join a certain religion, that that just doesn't sound right to me. I don't know. Maybe yeah. that's just I mean, me. I question the same thing about, like, what's so bad with electricity, you know? And there's people that are yeah. obvious. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, that's to each their own, I guess, like, people believe in, in you know, what they believe in. <laughs> That's why I like being more spiritual than than religious, because you know, then you get the best of everything. Wow, De- I, I, yeah. Deidre says that she didn't have Christmas for the first twenty four years of her life. Wow. Right. So yeah, very yeah. similar, similar situation. And there. what re- what religion was she? I don't know. She didn't specify. I don't think. Deidre, what religion are you? Or were you? <laughs> I don't know. Shelley commented that Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate anything. <laughs> Like okay, <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's, my that's true. I, I didn't think so. Well, it's not entirely true. They celebrate going door to door to see if you've been saved, right? I mean, they're really good on that one. <laughs> yeah, right. Can I come in to talk to you about our Lord and Savior? Have you received your copy well, like, of the Watchtower? You know, <laughs> not the Watchtower. <laughs> uh. Oh gosh. I'm looking for to see if there's any other new comments, but uh, I think we've, we've we've beaten that topic to death. So it's on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> well, what uh, about uh, New Year's resolutions? Now oh, okay. Well, that that one we could probably do the rest of the show on that one. So yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I don't do yeah. resolutions. Believe it or not, I haven't done New Year's I resolutions done in years. Them in years. No. Yeah. Partly I, because I know I, that it's not likely to be something that you're going to follow up on anyway. I mean, if, yeah. you, if you're just limiting it to doing it on New Year's, you're pretty much dead. If you want to follow through on a resolution, you, you make that resolution every day. You don't just do it one day out yeah. of 365. Mm-hmm. I just recheck my goals. So I, I guess I, you could say that's kind of like resolutions, but it's, you know, I just, once a year, like, as I'm getting to the new year, I reflect on where I've been because a lot of times, too, you, like, you know, even a few weeks ago, you're just so underwater with where you are now that, you like, you sometimes forget, you know, the, um, the, the amount of, uh, growth that you had. So, you know, I, mm-hmm. I really like to sit and say, Oh, look, you know, look where I'm at now compared to a year ago and just really, you know, take that in. And then from that, be like, Hey, well, where, where else, what else do I want to do? Or are these, are these goals still, still relevant? Cause if you ask me from right. 2016, 2017, <clears throat> I mean, sorry, 2017 to 2018, my goals completely shift, you know, because cause mm-hmm. my job is completely different. Like, this, my life is completely different. So, um, you know, maybe not resolutions, but like, you know, trying to find that that uh, true north again, at least, you know, every at least once a year. I do it more. I try to do it more, but that's a, at least uh, for sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at it then. <clears throat> By the way, Deidre gave us more information about uh, why she didn't have Christmas for the first 24 years of her life. It's because she was a Jehovah's Witness. She grew up in a Jehovah's Witness. Ah! Family. Yeah. Yes, point yeah. Alex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she followed up by saying, I am learning so much bad stuff now that I am out. <laughs> Good for you, Deidre. Good for you. <laughs> Glad to hear it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow, that's quite a that's quite a thing. Well, well, tell us more. Can you tell us what it's like growing up in a family like that, where you have that kind of very rigorous and um, defined uh, approach to not just religious values, but also how you live your life? How, how does that affect you? I'm curious, because um, I mean, it's not it's not been part of my experience, so I, I'm wondering, you know, what's it like from the, the point of view of somebody who actually goes through it? Because it's, it's not like you picked it, right? Well, I guess in one sense you did, cosmically, I guess you did, but in terms of you know, yeah. in the physical life, your parents picked it for you. I'm curious how that feels. Yeah. <laughs> she says, yes, yes, I can tell you a lot. <laughs> I'm sure you can. Yeah, parents pick a lot of stuff for us. So, I mean, that's just yeah. you know, the tip of the iceberg. That that just happened to be something that was, like, not like everybody else. <clears throat> but, yeah, I think it's I think it's, that's an interesting topic, too, is, like, 
when you are able to, at, or at what age you're able to kind of like shed that veil of whatever your parents have kind of put onto you, right? That you don't want any more like rules or religion or, you know, I thought that driving with the, uh, with the light on at night was against the law for the longest time. <laughs> okay. Wow. I, safe, you know? no, safe thing. <laughs> Uh, my father my swore up and down it was illegal. <laughs> it was that's illegal. I know. I know for a fact it was illegal. And driving with sandals. Too. My father told me that too. That. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's a serious thing because some people would grow up with like stricter parents, right? So they they hold on to that for maybe longer, or they they run away from it as fast as they can as soon as they're you know not with their parents anymore. So I think that's you know kind of interesting to question, you know. Way, in my you... house, we were never pressured to uh, pick a religion until we were of age enough to understand what we wanted and what we were picking. Like, right. we're Episcopalian by trade, I guess, because my my <laughs> grandfather was a was a was a preacher. So uh, my mother was a preacher kid, so she was like just totally against pressuring her kids into going to church every Sunday. You know, wait till they're 13 and let them pick what they want to do. Right. Okay. Well, that's a different approach. And I think that that, that makes whatever you do choose, it's going it's to stick a little bit more. Like I grew up and I went to Catholic school for like, you know, from first to eighth grade. So it's mm-hmm. kind of like, I, it's not that I didn't believe or it's, I was kind of, you know, you get tired of stuff, anything that you do yeah. that long. So, you know, he just didn't go to church or whatever for however long and then rediscovered religion in another way, you know. And so yep. it's like, um, but yeah, but I wasn't really, I mean, I, although I went to school, it wasn't something that was like super forced upon me where I know like another comic, uh, Pete Holmes, he, he was like, mm-hmm. he, where he grew up, his town was a super Christian. And like everything about his growing up was like, you know, he would like put gravel in his shoes and like jump off the top bunk to like repent you know for things and <laughs> little and th- you know things like that and it's just like wow you, you think about how long and then it took him a long time to kind of sh- finally shed that yeah um and kind of become who he, who he was you know gonna become regardless because some people like i said they, they'll find religion again if that's what is for them but you know yeah uh, yeah it's, that's very interesting by the mm. way it's not just deidre tim apparently was also jehovah's witness he says he left when he was 21, oh, wow. and he says to Deidre, hello, fellow apostates. <laughs> 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 Which is funny. Um, Deidre says, she, she gives some more def- uh, details about what it was like growing up. She says, uh, no dating unless you're ready to be married. We were very repressed. College or any higher education was not condoned. Wow. That's really What? Strange. Yeah. They went to five church meetings a week. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I couldn't do it. I need my nap time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can just see that. Yeah, cuts that's into fun. my schedule. <laughs> that would fly with the rents. Right, yeah. I can't go to church. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's funny. Well, I yeah, have I to say... What? Both of you guys, Deidre and Tim, I'm glad that you're out. Congratulations and, and congratulations <laughs> on, on taking over your lives and taking over your own minds and, and making your own decisions. I mean, uh, to me, when you go through something like that and you, you deliberately take the step out, I mean, I, I did it in a relatively minor situation, a, a, a Presbyterian mm-hmm. church. You know, I mean, there, there aren't a whole lot of penalties involved for that. For somebody coming up in a situation like Jehovah's Witness where there's pretty strong uh, opinions against it. I give you guys a lot of credit for breaking free. So congratulations to both of you. I love yeah, how they say we got out like it's a cult. Like, <laughs> they're like yeah, I got I got out a few years ago. <laughs> well, that's what I was gonna say. It's probably even harder because you know, you're, it's not just you, it's your, your family. Like, yeah. like your right. family, like now, talk about you differently or whatever. So I get that. Like, it's it, it can probably feel like that, like a cult, <laughs> because yeah. it's like well, not only. <laughs> everybody you know and all your friends like everybody's involved in this thing and it's like you decide hey that's not for me anymore and that's yeah that's tough that's that's tougher yeah. than and you know i don't think anything tougher than stand up people tell me all the time oh it's so scary to go up and stage in front of people i'm like that's not okay. scary I, I think scary is like yeah it's choosing something for yourself like you know or 
this happens with you know LG, LG, LGBTQ people all the time. It's like, hey, I'm making a decision for me that isn't popular with everyone I know, and like to me, yeah, that's, going that's against scary. the grain. You know, that's that's really scary. You know, yeah. I still everyone still loves me no matter if I fail. Whereas like something like that, it's like you know, there's there's no guarantee that the people that you have in your life are still there. So yeah, definitely uh, a, a very brave. Uh, thing to do for sure. Mm-hmm. And Alex, uh, Alex Dieter wanted me to pass along that yes, it is a cult. She agrees. So confirming See, what you that's said. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, can't do anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's not. That's not. A, I mean, the worst thing that I ever had to do was like I was talking too much during mass. So my dad made me stay by myself in the Spanish one that was after mm-hmm. for the whole hour. Oh. Wow. So yeah, <laughs> but that's. You know, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not that bad, you know. But I thought it was just the world, but, you know, it's, it's definitely not yeah, five days. Yeah, you didn't have to do it five days a week, though. <laughs> Deidre also shared another story. She says, my best friend was uh, one, uh, a uh, Jehovah's Witness also. She says, mm-hmm. I moved away f- from where we lived when I was 13. I left the religion in my early 20s, and when I did, I lost my best friend. Funny or not so funny thing is she moved here to where I live now, 40 miles away from the old neighborhood. She sees me around town, and she cannot speak to me. Oh, wow. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's really that sad. Okay. Well, that's why it's tough. Like, I, you know, I've shared this with you guys before, too. Like, I, you know, one of my character flaws that I work through, and I'm getting really, you know, a lot better with, but it's I, I care what people think. I want people to like me, you know. So, like, I, I can't <laughs> imagine, like, having to go through... A situation where you have to pick between like you know being yourself and then like having a best friend or or somebody mm-hmm. there that you've had for yeah. a long time. So again, like, I, but I, I know that you probably feel, uh, although it's you know it's uncomfortable that to, to lose a friend. Like I feel that being yourself is the greatest feeling that anybody can ever possess. Here, here, uh, and Live if you had life. even a, even a glimpse of that, um, yeah. Then, then you'll know that kind of those things were worth it. And and Deidre, I I don't know if, if you agree with that or not, but I don't put words in your mouth. But uh, you know, to me, uh, that's how it feels. You know. She she also said to Shelley, they tell you what you can and cannot watch on TV or read. Or reading, I can get that. TV, I'm <gasps> I'm amazed they let you watch anything on TV. I mean, what? seriously. <laughs> What what do they allow if you to watch? Restricted my TV schedule. To, oh. <laughs> we know I can't do that. <laughs> I, I wasn't, I wasn't allowed. This is not for me. I wasn't allowed to watch The Simpsons growing up. Ooh, that wasn't a religious thing. That just my parents didn't think it was in good taste. <laughs> so well, it wasn't. It, it, wasn't. it was tasteless. That was the whole point. <laughs> it was yeah. It was not. But yeah, there's nothing that stopped me like. You know, later on life. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't allowed to watch TV after like eight o'clock, but that was just because I'm supposed to be in bed. <laughs> that was right. my strictest rule. Like, it, it was easy when I was a kid because when I was a kid, there were only three stations anyway, so there wasn't anything on after eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ABC, NBC, and CBS. That was right? it. Later oh, on, God. public Walt television after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, let's see. Deidre is saying, anything you are likely to learn that shows them in a bad light is punishable. <laughs> Particularly what I'm Ooh. doing right now, talking about them. Well, if they come after you, Deidre, just tell them to see me. <laughs> I'll take care of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's, maybe you got to get jumped out or something. I don't know how that works. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll handle it on site. It's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, what I'm going to do is, I'm, what I'm doing right now is... I'm thinking beautiful thoughts about them seeing the light, the real light, not yeah. the one that they think that they're seeing, the real one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Well, how did we get on that? Oh, somehow we got there from Christmas. I'm not quite sure how we got there, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, Christmas goes into religions. Oh, we talked about Santa and not, not having not having. Oh, Santa. that's what it was. Yes, yes. Yeah. The gift. Well, that also raises another question, because I, I am not a cra- practicing Christian at all, and have not been for many, mm-hmm. many years, but I love Christmas, not because of the Christian story, but because of Santa Claus, because of the spirit of giving. Right. Oh, because of Santa Claus, okay. Yeah. 
No, I don't mean the movie or the contract. I, I mean just you know the principle. <laughs> I mean, if I see a, a Santa suit on the ground, I'm not going to put it on. I've seen the movie. Like, no, thank you. I don't want to become Santa Claus. <laughs> what? I would. Oh would my god. Would you really? I love those movies. <laughs> so you'd put the uh, you, you'd put the outfit on and fly around and, and do all the the present delivery once a year. Yeah, I don't know because I'm afraid of heights. So, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't know that, about that the flying part. That might be an issue with the. I don't know if you <laughs> meet the basic requirements of Santa Claus. <laughs> See, I Alex, you got to read the fine print. That's what the fine print is for. <laughs> you also, you got to be able to, the heights thing is a requirement for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Must have the tenure before. But I would definitely hand it to someone I know so I could at least go visit the North Pole. Right. Um, I got news for you. It's cold up there. I'm aware it's cold up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully aware. Okay. <laughs> That's what jackets and scarves and hand warmers are for. Uh huh. Okay. I got it all. Listen, I've already thought about this. I'm already ready to go. So <laughs> that's why Santa's so fat. He's got to. He got to stay warm. Yeah, he's got to get that insulation. He's got to stay warm. Okay. So um, when you put on the outfit and you, you get flown to the North Pole to load up, load up the sleigh, will you take a picture of the pole? I mean, we want to see what it looks like, you know, the real one. It, look, it looks like a barber pole. I'll take a picture of a barber pole and tell you it's the same thing. <laughs> uh, I'll be like, look, Walt, I'm at the North Pole. My brother's getting a haircut. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're definitely in silly mode today. <laughs> And Shelly's saying, what? There isn't a Santa? <laughs> there is so a Santa. Actually, there are billions of Santas. That's what's so beautiful about yes. it. There are billions. And every single one of them is special as far as I'm concerned. That's why. I, that's That to Aww. me is what Christmas is all about. To me, Christmas is all about the fact that it is, it's almost an excuse to behave in ways that we really should be behaving the rest of the year. But at least we do it mm -hmm. one, one time out of the year. It reminds me of something that right? happened last year. This time of year, last year, um, Louise and I went shopping and went to the supermarket just to get you know regular groceries and so forth. And it was packed. I mean, you could barely get down the aisles. There were so many people there. And what was really amazing about it was because it was the holiday season, everybody was so cheery and friendly. Oh, excuse me, let me get out of your way, all this kind of thing. And I turned to Louise and I said, where are the rest of these people during the rest of the year? I don't see these people most of the time. <laughs> I mean, they're just so polite. They were happy. They were cheery. Nothing, you know, You know, they bumped cards. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, like, where, where have you been? <laughs> everybody's, always, everybody's always the opposite on, yeah. on Christmas. Like, you know, parents would ordinarily... Uh, you know, let their kids go and sit on a stranger's lap. Yes, they don't right. Really well. <laughs> uh, even if the kid is crying, you know, but uh, it's Christmas, right? Right. Yeah, that's so, so true. <laughs> I don't even know if the kid animal. is crying. Mom, I thought you said not to talk to strangers. Shh, turn around and say cheese for the camera. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, oh, no, God. yeah, Christmas is it's a great time. It's it's yeah. It's 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 nice when you know people aren't trying to run you over with the cart. You know, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> like on Black Friday, yeah. or I any don't... other time you go to Costco. <laughs> Sundays, Costco's on Sunday. Don't do it. <laughs> do not do it. Yeah. See, I I just don't go out on Black Friday. I mean, why? I don't I don't do it anymore. What's the point? I used to in my twenties because it was like exhilarating to get the sales and. I got a yeah. flat screen TV for this much. Oh, my God. I saved so much money, and I'm done with my Christmas shopping the day after. But now it's ruined because now they're like the stores are open right after Thanksgiving dinner. Well, every, mm -hmm. everything they sell there, they sell online. Yeah, That's Cyber thing. Monday. Like, so stay at home. I went, with, I went with my – so I go just strictly for the, the violence and the exhilaration of <laughs> right. the danger, you know? <laughs> I'm like, it's like a, like, uh, you get to be the born ultimatum just for one day, you know? Right. But no, I went to, I went to the Levi store with a friend of mine. He's like, I need some jeans for, for a little party we we're going to. And the line, I, so I walked in and I'm a little taller than most people. So like, I can see more of the store, you know, and everybody else is like very much the same height. And so 
Uh. I'm like looking around and then I'm like trying, just trying to get through. And so I crossed in front of, in, through the line. I said, Oh, excuse me. I, you know, I don't want to cross through the line, but I have to, you know, get through. Okay. And then I crossed through the line again and people were like, Oh, I was like, Oh no, I'm not getting in the line. I just trying to. And then I was like, why am I keep crossing through the line? And I look up and the entire store is a line. <laughs> it's every nook and cranny where there, there's not a rack. There's, there's probably 150 people online. And now I laughed wow. out loud. Okay. And I laughed, and I started laughing. And then I said, we got to get out of here. Like, there's no way. Yeah. That's too much. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, that I, would overwhelm me. Just thinking about Black Friday overwhelms me. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we got to pay more attention to the audience because the audience is actually asking and answering questions. We're talking about Black Friday, and they're actually talking about law of attraction. <laughs> I mean, show us what they say. <laughs> You're right. Walt's in charge. We're just here. <laughs> so, so Shelly asks, what do you do to clear your blocks when you keep beating the same drum and not manifesting? And Deidre replied to that saying, does not manifesting mean we haven't fully awakened to the consciousness of the thing we are trying to manifest. So I think we just last left Black Friday. We got back into the realm of law of attraction. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that you that you got to like, and I talk about this sometimes, is change your approach a little bit. I think um, a lot of times we talk about manifesting, we're thinking about the end result, right? We're trying to think of whatever it is that we're going to get at the end. So let's say for me, it's uh, my acting career, right? And so, but I can't get frustrated because it's my acting you know, career isn't where it's, where I'm trying to manifest it to be tomorrow, but what I do, what you do have to realize is what's what you are manifesting is those opportunities are that are those stepping stones to what you ultimately want. You know, especially for the bigger manifestations, the pajamas, right? Like you want the pajamas, you get the pajamas. Like that's a little that's a little easier uh, or a little yeah. bit more straightforward. But you got to recognize also when the things that are like happening negative maybe in your life. Um, are for your purpose, for your, for that purpose, you know? So it's like, oh, this isn't happening. And well, why is that? Are you trying to skip steps? You know, did you not yeah, put yeah. in the work that you need? Because also like, you're not going to get something that you're not ready for either. You're not going to just, you know, manifest this. Like for me, it's like, I think about, again, an acting career. I'm, I'm going to manifest a feature film and I've never, I had no idea. So it's like, I, but I did manifest, uh, you know, a little commercial here. Oh, another, and these things that are building me to towards that thing that I want. So just kind of, uh, being more open. That's what I try to do. Is if I, if I'm not, it's cause I feel like I'm too focused on this one thing. So take a step back and really think about, you know, all the different ways that, that you could possibly get there and maybe take a, a step in a, in a, different direction and, and like i talked about before even that little step that might be the catalyst there where you meet somebody and oh, okay then and then things start to happen so you know because things you know manifest you know in a snowball fashion all you need is that one little uh kind of pivot i would say okay that's good i was yeah. <clears throat> you know, when you mentioned when you were talking about uh manifesting things that you don't necessarily want to manifest made me think of a a, a song a christmas song that was recorded, I believe, in the 1950s. Uh, a little kid singing, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. And I, I love that song. You love that song? Yeah, it's one of Louise's I favorite do. songs, too. She, that, that's the one she always asked me to play on the iPhone when we're out in the car. But um, <laughs> I, I, I just can't imagine what the parents must have been thinking, especially if they knew about the law of attraction, say, oh, no, please, no, no, no hippopotamus, please. <laughs> <laughs> Well, somebody told that little kid, go big or go home. So yeah, right. <laughs> that's, that's, and that's where the song came from. <laughs> well, yeah. And the kid had it all figured out. I mean, the lyrics of the song, you know, all the arguments were all worked out. So she was totally in yeah. alignment with what it is that she wanted, you know? You know yep. like, like the parents claiming that the, the hippopotamus is going to eat her, but then teacher said that the hippo is a vegetarian. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two steps ahead of the game. <laughs> and she figured out that, I'm, you know, you I'm can, very sad. Ne I've never heard this song. You've never but, heard that song? What? No. It's so adorable. Should we sing two choruses on the forum? <laughs> no, I have to do that. I just, Puerto, Puerto Ricans don't, Puerto Ricans have their own Christmas, uh, True. you know, songs and things, so. Well, th this is in the silly category, and, and not too many silly yeah. Christmas songs get played anymore. That's what the problem is. That's why you have. That's heard true. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. You got to listen to like the Christmas station. It'll, it'll <laughs> right. be on there. The like, Christmas there's station. one about like someone's mom 
you know, hooking up with the with Santa Claus or something. I, I oh yeah, Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Yeah, so I, I heard that one. one and I was like, I don't know if this is appropriate for Santa. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the little well, kid the whole thought. The thing is, is that Dad is dressed up as Santa, so that's mm. what we're going to yeah. I got it. That, that's what the little kid saw. The kid. <laughs> she was not yeah, stepping out like, with Santa. I was like, this mom's doing the most for these presents. I don't know. See, see Deidre li- lived a sheltered life because she was living uh, as a Jehovah's Witness, but you lived a sheltered life, and you don't have that excuse. What's your problem? <laughs> <I mean. laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, you know, I, I, you know where, I, where I grew up, we listened to uh, the Luther Vandross Christmas and... Ah. Uh, Brian mm-hmm. McKnight Christmas, yeah. and they didn't really have those. Or again, the Puerto Rican Christmas. So, you know, uh, yeah. What's different about know. what's different about a, a Puerto Rican Christmas? I mean, I, I really have no idea. What what is it that? So, oh, so yeah, so the a Puerto Rican Christmas. So what happens is we have our own. They're not called carols, but we it's like uh, these these songs. But all the songs are party songs. And so what happens is you get a group of friends with musical instruments. And you go wake up one of your friends. You go to their house and you start knocking on the door. And you start singing about how you're in front of the door and you're here for food. And for <laughs> and gonna, so the songs, yeah, the songs are basically about that. It's like, yeah, we're not going anywhere until, you know, uh, till the morning. And, and so this person, and people are ready for this, right? Because it's, it's uh, Christmas time. So people kind of have some things that they can serve for food and drink. And then, yeah, we, we're there for, you know, like an hour or so, and then we go to somebody else's house, you know, and, and then we go, and we, so it's, it's called a paranda. This and is, so it's just basically a parade of, you know, music and food and drink, and you just go all night from, you know, house uh, to house. So, Get so, a calorie link is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's basically what it is, right? Yeah. Well, well, it's aggressive caroling. You, it's caroling, it's and you better, caroling, you better pay yeah. up or else. <laughs> right. Well, that's why I love my culture. Like, you know, the, you know, uh, traditional caroling or, or, you know, is, is everybody has their hands, you know, folded and they're like, oh, da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all nice. And no, we're like, we're banging the door down. We're coming in to party. <laughs> <laughs> this is time. This is the time we're we're, we're getting drunk. You know, it's like drunk. I don't know. I think you guys like get too it. much into the wassailing. That's what the problem is. <laughs> too much wassail. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, this is fun. Well, we've yeah, we've uh, we, we, we haven't really done a whole lot in terms of uh, educating people about the law of attraction, but it's been a fun discussion. I've got to tell you that that's been really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and we're all going to be meeting over at Carlos's house so that we can go. What, what do they call us again? <laughs> what, what's the name Aggressive of it? Aggressive caroling. <laughs> oh, uh, for a, bar- a baranda. Baranda. A baranda. A baranda. Okay, okay. Yep. so 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 we're, we're going to be a baranding over at Carlos's house. So everybody meets at Carlos's yeah. house in about an hour, and <laughs> we'll all go out. Over my address. It's going to take me a little longer than an hour to get there. Ah. <laughs> <but. laughs> uh. Well, well, don't park on the street because they got street sweeping tomorrow in the morning. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's great. Oh, God. But seriously, it's been wonderful. And, uh, I mean, I'm going to be seeing both of you on Friday, Alex in the morning and uh, Carlos in the afternoon. And uh, so we're going to have to yeah. do a follow-up. Carlos, you, you're going to have to be ready to tell Linda about how to do this thing so that the three of us can be doing it on a Friday afternoon because now we're just a few days away from Christmas, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we look forward to that. Are we having a show next week? Uh, well, that's a good question, Is actually, because that's Christmas Day. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I would say probably we skip Christmas unless you guys want to do a show. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to have to skip. Cause yeah, I'm be I think so. Running around, yeah. Yeah. Besides, who's yeah. going to be listening? They're all going to be celebrating, right? You know, so there, no time right. to listen to a podcast. So that's right. We'll just pick it. Well, the next week is New Year's. <laughs> So here's the question. After, after all that caroling, are you going to be sober enough to do a podcast on New Year's? Yeah. I'll be sober I, I'm gonna, I sober up real quick. Yeah. I'm actually thinking about stop stopping drinking altogether. I, I haven't decided yet, but it never feels good afterwards. So No. And we're not in our yeah. 20s anymore, so the bounce back factor is not what it used right. to be. 
it's not as worth it to me anymore. But I don't know. That's, right. That's, that's the question for 2019. We'll have to revisit. <laughs> it's a yeah. good question. But yeah, I, I should be all right to do one on Christmas. Uh, all right. On New Year's. Okay. So that, that's what we'll aim for. Then we'll, we'll we'll do our next one on New Year's Day. So watch for us on New Year's Day, folks. This is going to be a treat, and we're going to tell you what happened with the wassailing. Except that what Carlos calls it different. But other than that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it's a long-winded way of saying we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.